Hey, welcome back Science Geniuses. I am the Bald Science Guy, and this is a one-click tutoring video that you should be using at the house uh, that can help you with some tutoring or some understanding, especially if you missed class. Our learning target today is being able to differentiate between chemical changes and physical changes and be able to explain the evidence uh, and lay that evidence out and prove that you have a chemical change, okay? Uh, this is our summary board. Uh, let's just jump right in here. The heart of the lesson is really all about chemical changes, okay? When you have chemical changes, you must have a new substance. That's why I put new substance in red, and I've got that card up there to remind us, new substance red. Now, some of the signs or clues that we have chemical changes going on, that evidence or those signs or clues are going to be gas, heat, light, okay? Also, color removal. Remember when we took bleach and we had that uh, flask with full of uh, dark green water and the bleach removed all that color? Color removal is permanent, okay? That's going to be a chemical change. Now, maybe color may be sound. If we add color, that could be a chemical change. It depends on how it was added. If you're adding color to your hair, if you have hair and you decide to add color to your hair, that is going to be a chemical change because your hair is going to react chemically to those dyes. Okay? But now if I just color my dry erase board, it's still a dry erase board and there is no chemical change going on. Sound also, if I have sound, my hands are still my hands, okay? There is no chemical change. However, if we have sound from firecrackers or, or uh, bottle rockets or other fireworks uh, from in that explosion, that's a chemical change, okay? Uh, as I look over here, I do remember that inside of every bubble, this is a box of Alka-Seltzer, inside of every bubble is gonna be that three letter word gas, okay? Whether it's a big bubble, like we saw when we uh, mixed our yeast in H2O2, or if it was teeny tiny fizzy type bubbles, like from the Alka-Seltzer, okay? Every bubble's got gas inside. Another piece of evidence, the biggest one, that's probably the most fun, was making a precipitate, okay? If you recall, we had liquid A, all right, which was a polyurethane um, foam, and we had liquid B, which was a polyurethane resin. We call it liquid A and liquid B. Um, when those came together and made a new substance or a solid, okay, that epoxy, and this in this case was a styrofoam uh, type chemical change, that solid, right, is evidence it's a solid of a chemical change. So a precipitate, if you have two liquids that come together and make a solid, that precipitate is proof. Also, if you take uh, the protein out of the milk by taking uh, warm milk and adding some vinegar, right, and you pull that protein out, that solid, that protein, the protein is going to be the solid, right, that is also a precipitate, okay? Um, here's one of our labs. That was a, that was a demonstration or activity we did. Um, here's one of our labs. Here's our lab sheet. I remember this is actually a great activity for you. Uh, to review where we took yeast and hydrogen peroxide also known as H2O2 and when we put those together you stirred them we had a thermometer in here and the temperature rose from 23 degrees Celsius up to about 39 degrees Celsius gas was given off because you could smell the odors right uh, so in this case gas was produced uh, heat was produced, all right, and that made it an exothermic reaction. Exo means gives off, thermic means heat. Gives off heat. Your cup got hotter, okay? That was actually a lot of fun uh, also, uh, watching you guys put the details uh, on that. So that was really good. Now, at the same time, we did talk about physical uh, physical changes. The key thing here is 
after a demonstration or after an activity, if you have the same substance, that's going to be a physical change. If you recall, just cutting paper, folding paper up, it's still paper, okay? That is going to be a great example of same substance. Um, what else did I want to share with you guys or remind you from this unit? I do remember cutting this apple, and today in class, actually, we looked at the, uh, at the uh, chemical composition of sugar. And the chemical composition of sugar was C12, H22, o, uh, O12, or carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. But the apple, over the last week, lost gases. And those gases condensed inside your bag. Remember, I showed it on the projector. And you saw the water, the H2O collected here. So if you take your C, pardon me, if you take your C12, H22, and O12, and subtract out your water, H2O, H2O1, you subtract that out, you have proved using chemical equations that as the apple rots or as the apple uh, gets older and the apple decomposes, it's creating a new substance, okay? One where that sugar molecule, that sugar molecule of, of um, C12, H22, O12 is actually changing as it loses its water, okay? So yes, you're getting gas, you can smell that, you've got a chemical change going on, but it's definitely creating that new substance. That apple, new substance. Your lab with the yeast and the H2O2 produce the gas, produce the heat, new substance. Your precipitate, liquid A, liquid B, if it forms a solid, right? If it forms a solid, absolutely new substance, okay? That's why it's in red, okay? Physical change, same substance, okay? Um, I think that's mostly what I wanted to share with you on this unit. Again, you've gotta be able to articulate your evidence, from whatever that change is. If you have gas bubbles, fizz, odors, all right, that's evidence. If it's giving off heat, or if it's starving for heat, that would be endothermic, exothermic, endothermic, okay? That heat, all right, is evidence. Also light, think of campfires. That's a chemical change. Think of a candle burning, chemical change. Fireworks, again, chemical change. Color removal, chemical change. Maybe sound, maybe color. That's why it's in a box, okay? But you gotta look at all your evidence. Uh, I talked about this before. If a police officer comes up across a car accident, before he can sit there and say whose fault it is or exactly what happened, he's gotta look at all the evidence, not one clue, okay? Not one sign. He's got to collect all of that, and, and you're going to be the same way as, as you do this uh, in class um, as well. Uh, I, at this point, that's a pretty good wrap-up. I would say, that was easy. Boom. So easy. A bald guy can do it. Uh, do look at this. Study this. Tutoring is on uh, Tuesday mornings at 745. Uh, I'd love to have you come, uh, and, and I can help you with this a little bit. Also, hit some other YouTube type in chemical change you'll see some great videos uh, in your google classroom i've got three lessons i got three lessons dealing with chemical change uh, that's loaded up for you use your google classroom okay um, you've got a common assessment coming up here in a few days i certainly hope this uh, one click tutoring video helps you it's peanut butter jelly time i gotta get out of here do great things